Hello, this is Cynthia Sue Larson of RealityShifters.com, and I'm here today to talk about looking back on the past with love. There's a great quote that says, nothing changes more consistently than the past. The past that influences our lives is not what actually happened, but what we believe happened. And there's a concept that I'd like to talk about today, which is called counterfactual reflection, and it's the way of making the best use, if you will, of the way that we always change the past. And the idea is, basically, that when we look back at things that have happened in our past and realize how much worse things could be than they have already turned out, it inspires us to do better in the future. That's basically putting it as simply as possible. And I'm reviewing a book this month that I highly recommend to everyone that wants to change addictions or habits or um, anything in their life that seems like it's impossible, whether it's something that a person has gotten themselves into or just what they might consider to be bad circumstances. The book is called The Imposter, How a Juvenile Criminal Succeeded in Business and Life. It's written by Kip Kreiling, and I give this a very high recommendation for anybody that would like to read a book that's true to life and contains a lot of tips and pointers for how a person completely turned their life around instead of blaming the system or their family or all the sorts of things that are pretty easy to blame. Um, this individual actually got himself out of a situation where he'd been arrested four time, 14 times, proceeded to get a college degree, uh, got a graduate college degree, succeeded very well at that, and got out of all of those addictions to drugs, um, dealing drugs, violence, and just all sorts of things. So that's a pretty extreme example. Uh, I like the example because it shows all of us that if, if Kip can succeed at something like that, in a pattern of drug abuse where that's part of the family, um, you know, there might be other things such as child abuse in the family, all of these factors um, were just completely reversed and turned around. So I think that gives all of us some hope um, on how we can look back at our past and see the ways that we've pulled ourselves out of difficult situations. Because life is a series of difficult challenges, and the way that we handle them tells us a lot about ourselves and how well we can go forward. So I also had a phenomenal reality shift experience just as I was working on this newsletter in which my daughter came home, or I thought she had come home because I heard the door open. It was unlocked where previously it had been deadbolted. I could easily see out to the front yard, which I can't do when the door is shut. I'd been in the kitchen making dinner, and as I looked out the front door, I could hear her voice. So I knew she was there, and I had just put a casserole in the oven. I turned around and washed my hands, looked back at the front door. The door was shut, deadbolted, and it was completely quiet just a moment later. So I walked to the front door, looked out, no sign of anybody there, and then I realized um, that the phone was working. So I picked up the phone and talked to a friend who desperately wanted to talk to me. It was something that was important in her life, and if I hadn't been available, she wouldn't have had the chance to talk to me. It was a pretty important phone call, lasted about 20 minutes, and then my daughter actually did come home. And I asked her if she'd come home previously, about 20 minutes earlier. She said no, she had not. This is an extraordinary example of a reality shift because it shows, if you will, sort of a bifurcation of reality paths. We're constantly selecting realities. And in one situation where my daughter came home 20 minutes after she originally, when I first saw her coming home, well, I didn't see her, but I saw the front door, heard her voice, all that kind of thing. It's like a branch on a tree that had been cut short, and then I jumped into another reality where I was had the time to talk to a friend who even asked me, do you have time to talk right now? And I told her amazingly, yes, I just put the casserole in the oven. I'm alone here at the moment. So it was quite remarkable. And I think these kind of things are not completely random. I think that they can be coordinated and orchestrated. I had meditated and prayed earlier that day. And I believe that that makes a difference. So my tips this month, for those of you that would like to make your life better than it already is, is to do a little bit of counterfactual reflection on your own. Look back at your past. Notice times that you've made some pretty important decisions, which might have seemed small, but when you look back, you can see they've had a big positive effect on your life. And think about the difference in where you are now compared to where you would be if you hadn't done what you did. Also, it's a great opportunity to 
bring in some meditation and time for reflection and prayer in your life and raise your energy, get a little bit more relaxed and you'll notice an even bigger improvement in the overall sense of luck and fortuitousness of events. So until next time, I hope you keep asking, how good can it get? This is Cynthia Sue Larson with RealityShifters.com.